What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your host, Captain Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, Tales from Lifeguarding at a Redneck Country Club, The Entitled Mom That Made My Summer's Hell for Three Years, Edition 1. Usual disclaimer on mobile formatting may suck. This was close to 20 years ago, so some wording may not be exact. Sorry if it's long, but this entitled mom was a piece of work. Context, this was the rural Midwest in the late 1990s. I worked three summers as a lifeguard at a lake. It was a membership-based sportsmen's club, which basically is a redneck country club. It had a stocked lake for fishing, a beach and swimming area, camping, archery, and gun ranges. Most of my best stories involve the same entitled mom Karen person. I have at least a dozen stories about this crazy woman, but I started with the first three, but if people like them, I'm happy to tell the rest in later updates. This Karen slash entitled mom was mid to late 30s and had two deplorable, horribly behaved little boys that were roughly 10, Terror Child 1, and 7, Terror Child 2, my first year and would have been 13 and 10 my last. Year 1, Week 1. I am on the lifeguard stand. Entitled mom comes to the bottom of the stairs. I am on duty, so as this conversation is happening, I am still mostly watching the 20 or so people in the water and only occasionally looking directly at Entitled Mom. Hey, you! Me? I point to myself. What's up? Where are my kids? In a super snippy, impatient, entitled tone. Uh, sorry ma'am, I don't know you. Which kids are your kids? Why aren't you looking at me? Do you know how rude that is? I'm sorry ma'am, but I'm working right now and I need to keep an eye on the children in the water. She rolls her eyes. Whatever. Terror Child 1 and Terror Child 2. Where are they? Since Terror Children 1 and 2 are Terror Children, I already know them by names as I have been warned by other staff. Oh, uh, they left the beach during the 2.45 p.m. break and haven't been in the water since. It was roughly 4.30 p.m. So where are they now? I don't know. As I just told you, they are not in the water or on the beach. What do you mean you don't know? You're supposed to be watching them. Terror Child 2 is only seven. I'm not a babysitter, ma'am. I'm a lifeguard. Exactly. You're supposed to be watching them. Ma'am, I am doing my job. My job is to watch the water and make sure no one drowns, not follow your kids around the club. I am a lifeguard, not a babysitter. So you just let two little boys run off unsupervised in the club to who knows where? Ma'am, I didn't let your children do anything. They were swimming when I blew the whistle for the break at 2.40. Everyone was out of the water, including your boys, at 2.45 when I went up to the break room. When I came back at 3, they were not on the beach. It looks like their beach stuff is over there. I already checked there. Their toys and towels are there, but their shoes are gone. Have you checked the playground? Usually kids only seem to take their shoes if they have to cross the gravel. There is a gravel parking lot between the beach and the playground slash snack stand. They better be there. Someone could have kidnapped my babies and it would all be your fault. Me thinking to myself, those kids are buttholes. No one in their right mind would want them. Luckily, I knew better than to say that out loud and went with, I'm sure it's going to be okay, ma'am. Go look over there, and if they're not there, I'll blow the whistle and get everyone out of the water, and we'll all go look for them. Entitled Mother leaves. About 10 minutes later, she returns with the boys in tow. They presumably were at the playground. She gathered up their stuff, and I blow the whistle when it's time for the 445 break. I end up walking up the stairs to the clubhouse right behind them, and she stops at the top of the stairs to tell me, You were lucky this time, but you need to keep better track of the kids if you want to keep working here. Incident 2. Year 1, Month 2. Terror Child 1 went fishing that morning, and when the beach reopened, after lunch break, Terror Child 1 found himself in possession of fish guts that he then brought to the beach and started throwing them at the preteen girls laying on the beach. Terror Child 1 is now maniacally throwing fish guts at them while laughing and yelling, It's raining! As the girls are screaming and trying to run away. Terror Child 1, what are you doing? Stop that, that's disgusting! Terror Child 1 throws fish guts at me while continuing to laugh. Shut up, I don't have to listen to you. Stop it right now or I'm gonna beat you for the rest of your life. Beaching equals you are banned from the swimming area and is the standard punishment for unruly conduct. But it usually was a kid getting beached for an hour or an afternoon. Terror Child 1 stops in shock, with his last handful of fish guts in his hand, ready to be launched in my direction. You can't do that! No one gets beached forever! Push your luck and let's find out! 
Me and Terror Child 1 have a stare down. Terror Child 1 drops the fish guts. Now pick them up and put them in the trash. Or what? Well, you're already beached for the rest of the day today, but if you don't throw them away, I will beat you for the rest of the week. I wasn't even planning on swimming today anyways. I didn't even bring my swim trunks. He sticks his tongue out at me. Fine, you're banned today and tomorrow. Now pick those up or I'm gonna add Saturday. That's not fair. I don't care. You can't throw fish guts at girls or at the lifeguards. You're 10, you know better. Terror Child 1 continues whining, but actually complied and picks up and tosses all the fish parts before leaving the beach. On the next break, I track down the front desk admin, that was the lifeguard manager, to tell her the story, making sure to mention that one of the preteen girls was the club president's daughter, and that Terror Child 1 had backtalked at me. The lifeguard sometimes had a hard time getting her to stand up for us, but she hated backtalk, and the president's daughter thing helped, so she assured me my two-day ban would stick. As anticipated, Entitled Mother later gave the desk admin an earful. I wasn't there for it, but based on the admin's retelling, the gist was some combo of boys will be boys, the girls were asking for it, oh god. And how dare the beach force her to spend the next day with her son and instead of dropping them off at the beach because she had appointments. Year 1, roughly month 2. Context. About 40 feet into the swimming area from the beach, there was a rope that demarcated the shallow area. There was about 4.5 to 5 feet of water at the rope, and the shelf of the lake dropped off steeply about 10 feet past the rope, and the deep end of the swimming area went up to like 60 to 75 feet. To go past the shallow end rope, kids had to pass a swim test for safety. Situation. It is after last swim. I am on closing, and I am dragging up the boards and floats to the shed. Hey, OP! Hi, Mrs. Entitled Mom. How are you? Terrible, and it's all your fault! What? What happened? You're discriminating against my little angel, Terror Child 1. I'm sorry, Mrs. Entitled Mom, but I have no idea what you're talking about. I haven't seen Terror Child 1 at all today. Of course you didn't see him. After you were so mean to him and embarrassed him, he doesn't even want to show his face around here and has been hiding in the campsite all afternoon. I'm sorry Terror Child 1 is having a rough day, but I don't have any idea why you're mad at me. I haven't even seen him. Yes, you did. You failed him at the swim test, even though he swam the full distance. But you told him you were failing him anyways because he's a bad kid and it's his punishment for throwing fish. And I demand you apologize and pass him immediately. Mrs. Entitled Mom, were you there when this allegedly happened? Or is this just what Terror Child 1 told you? Are you calling my son a liar? Terror Child 1 is a good kid and would never lie to his mommy. Mrs. Entitled Mother, please don't put words in my mouth. All I know is that I did not do swim tests this morning. I worked a 12 to 8 shift, and as you may know, we do swim tests between 9 and 11, so I wasn't even there. But if you can hang on while I finish locking up this equipment, I can check the schedule and see who did the swim test this morning. I don't have time for this. Just go right down that Terror Child 1 passed and get him his wristband so he can go out to the rafts in the deep end with his friends. Again, I'm sorry, but I can't do that. Unless one of the staff administers a swim test and he passes, we can't get him a wristband. It's for his own safety. But I'm happy to look into what happens this morning and get back to you. She rolls her eyes. Freaking bench! She stomps off. I went off and found the lifeguard who did the swim test this morning and, what a shocker, Terror Child 1 had failed miserably. He didn't even make it a third of the required distance and only made it 20 seconds into the tread test. 90 seconds treading water without touching. If you folks like this story, I'll tell you about the follow-up with Entitled Mother about his failure and more of her crazy antics. Yes, do more. This is like a, like a kid's summer camp movie with the mischief and the lifeguard and the, <laughs> the horrible moms. This story's called, No, Your Kid Isn't Guaranteed Anything. On mobile, so formatting. Not my story, but written from my perspective to make reading easier. This story is just more entitled kid than entitled parent, but both of them are crazy. I was teaching a lifeguard certification class, and usually they go pretty smoothly. Even though 16-year-olds do sign up, if they want to be a lifeguard in the first place, they're usually mature enough to handle it. It may seem like a fun job, but we save people's lives, and we have a lot of responsibility. We were in the pool one day, and Entitled Kid was doing a spinal, which is where you take someone out with a backboard because of a possible head, neck, or spine injury. Entitled Kid was great so far in the class, as we had really only done tests in the classroom and nothing in the water yet. I understand it can be stressful for kids, but the situation in real life is stressful. I tell all the victims to be realistic. All victims are just other trainees or sometimes myself. 
If someone hits their spine, they're not going to keep themselves afloat or align themselves on the backboard. It's entitled kid's turn to go, and she grabs the victim, who is pretending to have dove into shallow water and hit his head. Victim is one of my trainees, and a very tall and hairy boy, although skinny. Entitled Kid gets him into the correct position in the water, when Victim's feet start sinking. Not his fault, and something Entitled Kid will have to deal with if it ever happens in real life. Instead of adapting, Entitled Kid starts plucking his armpit hair. And this kid, as I've said before but need to emphasize, is hairy. She keeps telling Victim to listen to her very aggressively while pulling out his hair. I know Victim pretty well, so I let it continue just to see how the rest of the spinal goes. They're almost to the board to strap him in, when Entitled Kid reaches for his nipple. Victim yells at the top of his lung, If she plucks my nipple hair, I'm done! I yell at Entitled Kid to stop, and she does stop plucking hair, but continues telling Victim to listen to her and follow her instructions. She couldn't comprehend that this was a scenario meant to play out like real life and not have everything go smoothly. She finished the backboard and it's terrible. Victim would have died. Usually if someone messes up, they get another chance. I'm not evil and I really don't want to fail people, but I could give Entitled Kid a thousand chances and I would never pass her. She wasn't in the right mindset to possibly save someone's life. So, I tell the whole class, including Entitled Kid, good job, and we go back to the classroom to finish some stuff up. The whole time, she is bragging about how good she is, saying stuff like, It's so obvious I passed! I was so great! Entitled Kid is thankfully the last kid to leave, so I tell her to hang back for a second. I tell her that she actually failed the class which she just doesn't seem to understand. I try to explain to her why I'm failing her and all that, but she genuinely doesn't comprehend. It's not even a whole day later, and I get a very strongly worded email from Entitled Kids, Entitled Mom. Entitled Mom is furious that I had the audacity to fail her child. The whole email is full of cuss words and insults to the place I work at and to myself personally. I send the email to my supervisor to make sure she's aware of Entitled Mother, and my supervisor emails back that she also got an email along the same lines. Entitled Mother then comes in, already throwing a fit, and demands that Entitled Kid gets her lifeguard certification. I explain that it's not going to happen now, but she is welcome to take a while and then retake the class in the future. Entitled Mother says fine, and that Entitled Kid had already signed up for the class next month, but needs to do it free of charge. When someone pays for a lifeguard class, they're paying for my time being there and teaching them, not an actual certification. It is never guaranteed, and it says right on the payment page. I tell Entitled Mother no, and she will have to pay for it and she freaks out and storms out of the building. Even though Entitled Kid was signed up for the class next month, she doesn't bother to show up. I still see Entitled Mother sometimes in the morning coming in to work out. I have to watch my back, or more specifically, my armpit hair. <laughs> okay, I'm confused. Why the hell was she pulling his armpit hair out? Poor kid, armpit hair is not fun getting pulled out, because I've done it. I'm sure everyone's pulled their armpit hair out for fun before. Not for fun, for like, seeing what it was like. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking. This story's called... Entitled Mom Hates Foreigners! Alright, background info. Here we go, uh, here's the cast. There's me. Entitled Mom. Entitled Kid. Nice guy. Nice security. I am a Norwegian, and I look the stereotypical part. Blonde hair, tall, blue eyes, etc. Important later. I was visiting the USA for a bit to see some family, and was buying some stuff at a shopping center. Cue the entitled mother tapping me on the back, and this conversation ensues. Hey, get that box for me off the top shelf. Alright, sure. I'm not that bad to not. I give her the box and she walks a bit away without saying thank you. Oh well, whatever happens, happens. Then I overhear her kid. Why is that guy so weird? He looks so weird. He's a foreigner. They all look weird and they act weird. Just tell me anything, entitled kid. Well, Americans are better, right? Now I'm thinking, what the heck? That's stupid. They're just entitled. Whatever, nothing worse can happen. I thought I was wrong. Of course, Americans are better than dumb foreigners. We're smarter, too. So they have to do stuff we say? Yes, entitled kid, they do. Now I'm thinking, hold on, what the heck? This is just slavery based on country of origin. That's stupid. I go over to them and say, Hi, uh, miss, I just want to ask you to give me that box on the shelf behind you, please. Thanks a lot. What? No, I don't have to. Okay, sorry. Hey, you, get me a... Item from four aisles down. 
Sorry, I'm kind of busy. I'm shopping for myself right now. But you have to! You're right, Entitled Kid. You have to get it for him. Uh, no, I don't. Get it when you go over there yourself. Ah, Philly Foreigner Poopoo Enchilada! What? Security, he assaulted my son! Security guard comes over, confused. What's going on here? This foreigner assaulted my child. Arrest him! Nice guy, a bystander, interrupts. That's not what happened. This lady was treating this foreign gentleman very unfairly. They argue for a bit while I tell nice security what happened. Ma'am, you need to stop and leave the store now. Fine, I'm never coming back. She storms out and I thank nice guy and nice security. I am still in contact with nice guy. We are good friends now. Moral, don't hate foreigners for no reason. Silence, nationalist scum. Okay, um, that woman was gross and she's teaching her poor child some horrible things, man. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.